Oh dear God. <coughs> hey dudes, what do we think about my new art? I can't not mention it. It's been such a long time coming. It is by my friend Jordan Jolie. I will link his Instagram in the description below. I talked about this at length in my vlog that just came out, but uh, yeah, they're supposed to be like complexion shades, you know, like a, like a shade range. I thought they're ice cream coats. Anyway, today guys, we are going to be, I'm being a little bit quiet because my little dude is asleep next door, but I thought it would be fun to do an updated full face of Ilia makeup. They just sent me a bunch of stuff, including their new mascara. And I did get a couple of requests from people to do a fall themed makeup look because it's been a while and they do make one of my favorite kind of fall toned palettes. They also sent over a bunch of stuff that I hadn't gotten a chance to try. So a lot of this is gonna be new to you guys, at least in shade, maybe not in formula, but new to my channel in shade. And we will just see how this look comes together. I have no idea what it's gonna look like, but I'm gonna move you guys in. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm actually going to probably apply the old mascara versus the new mascara. That was why I looked unsure right at the end of that shot was because I was like, should I say it? Yes, so I want to be able to compare them so that we can pick which one we like better. And I have had the chance to try the new one, but I haven't put them side by side yet. I just want a little bit of a primer and I had the Ilia primer, but I decluttered it. I'm just gonna prime with a little bit of Tower 28 spray, get a little life in my face, you know? I had the best of intentions trying to wear my hair down today, <laughs> but I needed out of my way to do the makeup, so. I'm not going to like dig on myself here, but like we have some ground to cover, <laughs> okay? It's been a long week. <laughs> I'm going to start here with the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. I have this in the shade Tulum. This is such a beautiful skin tint and I have not gotten to use it very much lately. And it just feels really nourishing on my skin. <sighs> I need it, <laughs> I just need it. I've been using so many actives, just trying to get everything back in balance and treat my pigmentation. When I go to the dermatologist today, I think I'm going to make an appointment for chemical peels now that it's not super, super hot outside. Okay, hopefully the concealer is going to do some heavy lifting for me today. So this is the True Skin Serum Concealer in the shade Arrowroot. And I didn't like this at first, like I said, because I was more in a mode of using high coverage concealers. And this is very medium coverage. I felt like it was a mismatch for the True Skin Serum, what? Yes, foundation. The other one, Super Serum Skin Tint, you have to admit they're very similar and they're both kind of a tongue twister. But what I was saying is that this has kind of grown on me. I hope this video is not like ASMR because I'm trying to talk a little bit more quietly, be a little less chaotic for the sake of my son's slumber right now, but I hate ASMR. That concealer is magic. That is doing a world, a world of good, isn't it? And it's smoothing. It's so nice how smoothing it is. That was one thing that I was, I have a lot of pregnant friends right now and we were commiserating about the kind of struggles that no one talks about, especially in the beginnings of pregnancy because the first trimester is very secretive. You know, you don't wanna like tell anybody that you're pregnant yet. I have my feelings about that, but either way, trying to hide my pregnancy in the first trimester when the symptoms were so, just so all encompassing and I was on camera and I was like gasping for air and also just like salivating uncontrollably. Like it's just something that happens. Your body does the weirdest stuff when you're pregnant. Like, <laughs> you make a lot more blood. And so like if you lean on your hand or like put your elbow on top of a chair or something and kind of, you know, partially cut that circulation off, like your hands will just like all the veins blow up. It's so gross in so many ways that are like only annoyances you know there's nothing consequential about it it's just something that you kind of notice and have to like get over but yeah so all those ladies right now i feel you i feel you and all the like my friend cammy right now keeps texting me she's like who would ever do this twice like this is the worst thing i've ever experienced and i'm like i feel so not alone thank you because <laughs> pregnancy was the worst thing i'd ever experienced <laughs> that's kind of nice so i don't have a contour from them or anything but i will wait on that because they actually 
sent the bronzer and the highlighter that I have actually decluttered. This is such a pattern with me and Ilya, is that I buy it, I end up not liking it, I declutter it, and then they send it to me, and somehow I like change my feelings on it because it'll be enough time that, I don't know, my tastes have evolved or something, but if I recall, this highlighter is awesome, but the bronzer is just the wrong shade for me. I think they only have like two shades in it. That's great. I should really worry about yelling to wake my child up when my dog is so insensitive. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, I'm going to go in with some beer. I'm gonna kill my dog. That's what I'm gonna do. He walked off just as I was coming down there to tell him to shut up. Smart dog. Yeah, I'm going to use a little bit of powder because I actually have powder from Ilya and I love their powder. Like I forgot how much I love their powder. So it's really nice because it's like super finely milled, but it doesn't really mattify too much. It doesn't add a lot of coverage. Oh my God, the smell of this brings back memories of Clean Routine 2019 so hard. Whoa, that's a nostalgia bomb. 2019, so many things were so different. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, but isn't that just such a nice powder? Look at it. <gasps> Look how blurring it is. It's so nice. It is cornstarch based though. I remember I always used to mention that because we were very heavy on making sure that people with skin allergies knew about possible allergens. Now we can go on with the bronzer. Yeah, it's a little contrasty. We'll just see about making it work here. Oh God, good job, Khaki. I'm glad I put the powder down first at least. I don't know, maybe this is the wrong brush. Maybe I'm just being too cavalier, but I think that that's kind of how you know a bronzer isn't the right shade for you. It's like, well, what is happening there? It's stuck and stamped. Yeah, it may not just be that I don't like the color. I also don't really love this formula. It's pretty, it's pretty stampy. Look at it stamping on my face. What are we gonna do about that? We're just going to blend and pray, blend and pray. One of those days. I do need the bronze. I just might not need this bronze. God, it's stampy. Ah, uh, you know, I think that I have lost my patience as it pertains to clean beauty formulas, but at the same time, I've also gotten really cynical about what really makes a clean beauty formula because I kind of think that, especially when we're talking about powders, there's not really that much difference between one and the next. It's not like it's chock full of like actives and silicones and stuff. So like, what's the milk? So what I'm gonna do is use a little bit more powder and try and smooth that out a little. Like if it was something that I had bought and I had my heart set on trying to make it work, I would probably just mix it with powder each time I used it to kind of give it a little bit less pigment, a little bit more leeway, but this will kind of pick it up and move it around enough that it'll blur. Okay, next, they sent me Ladybird in their multi-stick. I had never used Ladybird before. It's very pretty and peachy. Peachy rose. So I'm gonna dab that on. <laughs> My mother-in-law is figuring out what's wrong with Simon right now. Oh, that color is gorgeous. Mm. Mm -hmm. Pardon me while I go a little nuts with this. This is really pretty. It's such like a fresh rosy glow. I do, I think his teeth are coming in, poor guy. The silver lining is if he takes a lousy nap, he conks out all night. Who's cute? I'm cute. That's awesome, I love that. Okay, yeah. I love that color. That's super, super pretty. I don't even feel like I really need contour. 
It's just like a really nice, natural kind of flush. I mean, we'll see how I feel. <laughs> Poor guy. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is put some music over me applying my eyeshadow um, while Simon gets his little baby life together <laughs> next door. <laughs> and hopefully when we come back and talk about mascara, the coast will be clear. One of my favorite eyeshadow palettes pretty much ever. I really, really, really love the color story here, the conciseness of a six shadow palette that just has so much flexibility and usability. All I did was use basically, yeah, those four shades right there. And that is just the ultimate easy, cool toned, yes, but more neutral eye look for me. It just, it just works really well. And since they sent me the highlighter, I think we will use the highlighter to finish out the eye look here. I'm gonna put that up here on my brow bone. It's a little on the gold side, but I can make it work. It's just a little bit beige. And then we'll use that right on the inner corner. Blend that out. Okay, let's do a little bit of brow. And I do have the Ilia Brow Mousse, but I do not have an Ilia like brow pencil. I don't even know if they have one. What is going on? So we'll start with the mousse and see if I need to fill in on the pencil. This is the Essential Brow Natural Volumizing Brow Gel. I have it in medium brown. It has a funny brush. It's short on one side and long on the other. I do like it though. It's a, it's a good formula. It's not quite as much hold as I would love. It's always a balance, right, of pigment and hold, and it does have quite a lot of pigment and not quite as much hold. So I have to be a little bit careful, but it's definitely better than some that I've used. And it's a good color. Kosa's just re-upped me on everything, and man, they really pay attention because when they sent me the brow air brow and brow pop initially they were a little bit too dark and they just sent you know the next fairer shade same thing happened with the concealers and i was just impressed that like you know they sent me all of my favorites i had just mentioned in a video like that went out that day so they couldn't have even known that um i had run out of jellyfish but jellyfish is my favorite because it's the clear of their lip oil but uh yeah that was what they sent it was awesome you can see how my inner corners though, look at that, they're like a little too dark. That's what I'm always talking about when I say it's very rare for me to be able to find a highlight shade that actually acts as a highlight on my inner corner because if it's even slightly too beige, that part of my face will make it look too dark. So I am actually going to put something else there. I'm just gonna start by putting a little bit of the powder back there. Might be enough, honestly. Eh, I don't know. I mean, not that you always have to have an inner corner highlight, but an inner corner low light is weird. <laughs> I don't know, what do you guys think about the brows? Mm, I'll get my eyeliner mascara on and then we'll decide. But you can place your bets now. All right, real quick, we will throw on a little bit of liner. I'm gonna work from my Thrive palette because it is my favorite liner. I love this tiny, tiny brush though from BK. I've never seen one this small. This is the 208. I mean, you can get so much precision. Do you guys want an updated brushes and tools video? I feel like I just did that one, but I bet if I looked at it, I probably did it like a year and a half ago. <laughs> Time flies when you're in quarantine. I'm also planning an autumn haul, clothing haul. You guys loved the spring one so much. I'm gonna see if Italic wants to partner with me for it again, because they have such good sweaters and stuff. And they did just come out with skincare. I need to try that too. All right, 
I am digging how that eye makeup look is coming out. It, I mean, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I freaking love, uh-oh, what hapa. I love that shadow palette so much. I'm not going to use that highlighter on my cheeks. It's too dark. Okay, let's go in with the old Ilia mascara and the new Ilia mascara. And I will tell you guys why. As far as regular mascara formulas are concerned, I really, really enjoy this one in particular. I do actually recommend this one a lot. When people have really sensitive eyes and they don't want a tubing mascara, this is such a great formula. Yeah, it's gonna smudge just like anything else does. I mean, not a whole lot because it's actually just, I don't know, it's like a pretty lightweight formula, but I think that it does have, I don't know, a pretty good staying power compared to a lot of other ones that I've tried. And when you rinse it off, it rinses completely clean. It doesn't, like you don't get out of the shower and go, oh, in the mirror, there's something about it that like, if you just wash your face, this rinses completely off. And there's something so nice about that, that they're actually, even though it's not a tubing mascara, there is no rubbing with this. I mean, unless you're just, you know, you're not a night showerer and you're having to, you know, wash it off before you go to bed and wash your whole face kind of thing, it still mostly comes off with your face wash. It rinses so easily. And look at the definition that you get in your lashes. Now granted, this is a mature tube. It's much, much thinner when you first get it, but it's not joking around. Like, it's not like one of those clean beauty mascaras that you're just going on like, feel good. You know, like, oh, the ingredients are really good. Convincing yourself that you like it. Like that is a great looking mascara. Bulletproof, no, but as normal mascaras go, like that's a very, very pretty mascara. And that's the original formula, the Limitless Lash Mascara. Now I'm going to go with the new one. So this is the Fullest Volumizing Mascara. And the first thing I didn't love about this is the brush. So the Original one has a plastic bristle brush. I mean, I, they're both plastic bristles. I mean, they're both, you know, like this one's nylon, this one's plastic, but you know what I mean? So like one is kind of a, you know, a chaotic bristle and the other one is actual plastic spikes. And I prefer the old one, the old plastic spikes. It's just a lot more control. It's just what I'm used to. This one's just huge. It's very, very big. And I tend to, with my very deep set eyes, get this all over the place, but. That was my singular reservation because it is extremely similar in performance as far as like how it rinses off and everything. It does a really, really good job of rinsing clean. It wears really well. Like I did yoga in it. I walked the dog in it and stuff like that. And I didn't have any noticeable smudging. And if I get smudging, it's usually up here, actually. It's not so much underneath. It has to be a really, really bad mascara to smudge underneath. But um, I didn't even get like the typical smudging up there at the top with this. I only wore it for about, I would say like six hours. It wasn't like a full, full day, but I was very impressed with it. And, um, and it does, it rinses, rinses really, really cleanly. It just has a much hunky chunkier kind of volumizing formula. So it's more about your preference. So you see how this is very like lengthened and defined, and this has more of the volume built right there at the root. And it happened really with like one coat. So that's the old one. And that's the new one. And this is still with two coats. Um, so I'll let this dry a little bit and then I'll put on another coat. The only thing though is just, it's harder to get to the root with such a big brush. I don't really understand why there needs to be such a big brush, my personal feelings. I'm gonna let that dry for a second and put on a little bit of eyebrow pencil. Oh, look at that. I have brow pencils from Kosas that they just sent me. They come with a little, my sister and I used to call them magazine boogers to stick them to the inside of the packages, which was hilarious because I watched Simon try and pull them out of the packages. He was having a blast. He pulled everything out all at once. So they sent me medium brown this time instead of medium chocolate brown. So I think it's going to be a better match. Yeah, I think medium brown is where it's at. Cool, excellent, that's perfect. Very, very happy with that shade. I like the stiffness of that pencil too. Ooh, and a very stiff brand new spoolie. It's nice. All right. 
Very pretty. Now, I'll go in with one more coat of that mascara so you can see what two looks like. Ooh, girl, daggum. That mascara is not playing around, guys. Look at that freaking mascara. Yeah, the old one is still really, really good, but like, that is someone's vibe, and it is such a good vibe. I like it so much. Like, it's just so, like, not backing down. <laughs> it is, it is, she is who she is, you know? Oh, man. Yeah, it's that, that like, you know, semi-clumpy, sexy lash. It's very excellent, I like it a lot. I think we do need some more blush, but first I'm gonna go in with lips. So they sent me two lips, and I already had one of them, so I didn't open the other one. This is Petals, and then this is Lullaby. Mm, this is where things get potentially quite fall-ish, you know? That's quite pink, and that's even pinker. Holy moly, that's, mm -mm. We're gonna go with the lip balm here, the balmy tint, but I'm going to start with my lip liner so that maybe when they come together, it'll kind of cool it off a little. I need to blend on my cheeks too. That, that bronzer threatened to destroy my makeup look first and foremost, didn't it? <laughs> Again, it's called Ladybird, and I mean, come on. Ooh, I'm really gonna go aggressive here. I might put a little bit in my eyeshadow look too to kind of pull everything together. Yeah, I kind of want contour. <laughs> I'm taking a little bit of that and just tapping it like that in my eye look. All it takes is the tiniest little bit right there, and it'll just kind of pull it a little bit together, clean up a little bit on my jawline where that bronzer tried to sabotage us. And as I have been known to do, I'm going to take a synthetic brush here, dip it in the beige highlight from Salt New York right here, and use that to blur and obscure all of the unblended edges here. When you have as much pigment and as see-through of skin as I have, you can't always just keep covering things up. You know, you need something that's going to disrupt the way that the light hits your face that'll blur, believably. Otherwise, you'll just be kind of like chasing down perfection until you have a mask on. I'm gonna use the Uma contour because it's what I have in front of me. Tibbity tap a brush into there. And that's just gonna be our finishing touch here. Pull it all together. Okay, I'm going to give this a little spritz with something that yes, I did declutter, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> the blue light, actually did I declutter this or did I just say I don't like it? Either way, this is the blue light filter from Ilya. Oh dear God, the sprayer's all plugged up. <laughs> didn't work at all. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'm gonna move you guys out and I'm going to talk individually about these products and my thoughts on them. First of all, I wanna thank you guys for bearing with me throughout this video because, you know, my crying child in the background probably isn't like the best ambiance when you're trying to relax and watch someone's video, so thank you. I do work from home. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go through all of the products because we have just had so much time since I have talked about Ilia. Starting with this foundation, the Super Serum Skin Tint. I have it, as I said, in the shade Tulum, and it is just such a great, as sunscreen-based skin tints go, this is one of the easiest ones to use, easiest ones to wear. Beautiful on lots of different skin types, skin ages. My mother loves it, my sister loves it, I love it. We all have very, very different skin. So it's just a very versatile formula. I like it very much. This concealer blew my mind today. I just, it's so blurring, it's so pretty. I think the world of it and I regret ever saying anything bad about it. Just bear in mind that it is medium coverage. It's not gonna be a full coverage concealer. I like really, really like this color of the multi-stick. In the, 
thing. It looks like it's going to be kind of tan almost it, in person at least, but it's just a really pretty muted rose, like a dusty peachy pink. And I just think it's lovely. It'd be really, really beautiful on a very lightweight face of makeup. You know, um, it's one of those things where I don't feel like I need to reinforce it with a bunch of other things that add the dimension back into my skin because it looks so at home on my complexion. And I know that it's easy to look at something like that and be like, oh, it's just rose. Yeah, it's nuanced. Let me see if I have another like rose shade nearby that I can like compare it to. Pink Soap. Pink Soap from Lisa Eldridge is one of the most like squarely straight down the middle rose colors that I've ever used. I love this formula, I really do, but it is like a very, very typical color. And you can see, so if you look at the Lisa Eldridge right here, and then you look at that Ilia, that is, it's just different. It's just a different kind of color. It's got a little bit of brown in it in just this beautiful grounding kind of way. I could get real passionate talking about freaking nuanced colors and I do often. The bronzer and the highlight, I decluttered them once and I would declutter them again. Not because they're bad, f mm, I shouldn't say not because they're bad formulas. I don't think that bronzer formula is very good. It's so grabby. It's just not easy to use and there are such better ones out there. You know, I've gotten so spoiled using the Patrick Ta because it never does that. It never grabs. It's so easy. And the, the Charlotte Tilbury one, it might grab like a little bit, but it's so close to my skin tone and it blends so much more easily once it's on the skin that I've had no issue with it. Victoria Beckham, no stamping whatsoever. So yeah, it's just hard for me to kind of put up with something like that or recommend that someone buy it. Now, if it is your ideal shade, you will be more likely to put up with a little bit more difficult of a formula, but it kind of missed the mark for me in both cases. So that's why it's a pass. And then the highlighter doesn't really function as a highlighter for me because it's just a little bit too gold, a little bit too dark, totally personal, but you know, I'm able to use it as a highlight on my brow bone. I feel like it catches the light nicely, but I wouldn't want to apply this directly to my cheeks just because I feel like it's going to be a little bit too tan. And as you saw on my inner corner, it just doesn't do the job. And that's just a shade issue, but they didn't put out very many shades. How many times can I wax poetic about how much I appreciate this eyeshadow palette? I think that the main thing is that when my expectations were set doing clean beauty, I really expected most eyeshadows in the clean beauty realm to be terrible. They really mostly were, unless they were liquids or creams. It, all the powder eyeshadow formulas were just bad and expensive. And then when I tried this, finally, I was like, oh my gosh, where has this been all my life? Not just because the formulas are gorgeous, but also because this is such a tight color story. It is just so useful. They all go together so well. I always talk about how frustrating it is when you have an eyeshadow palette. A lot of times a very large eyeshadow palette this will happen with where you still feel like you kind of get a couple of steps in and then you don't have anywhere to go and then you kind of have to pull something else out. This has everything that I need. You know, I could very much use this as an eyeliner if I wanted to. It's very similar to the color that I use. I prefer the Thrive, just it's what I'm used to using, so I have it so I'll pull it out, but like I could travel with just this and, and get by. The color story is also, I think, you know, very autumnal, um, but I just think that like these colors in particular being this cool toned story, but they just have this really beautiful richness to them, no ashiness. It's just a really beautiful palette. It was sold out for ages and ages and ages. I know they have a warm version of it too. I would love to try it because the formulas are like, not just good for clean beauty, they're just good. <laughs> the brow, again, it's good. If I recall, it's a little pricey and it just doesn't have as much hold as I want and it's not the ideal balance of hold and pigment to me. It's a little more pigment than I would want, a little less hold than I would want and that's totally personal. Has everything to do with the nature and the mood of the little hairs growing out of the front of my face. So if you love it, or if you have completely different eyebrows from me, you know, take my word with a grain of salt. That is super, super personal. Now, let's talk about this mascara here because yeah, as non-tubing formulas go, I always really liked their original one. And it's super, super pretty. But man, look at the difference between those two. Like, I'm gonna leave the house like this. I don't really care if anybody looks at it and was like, your eyelashes are different. Like, no one should be that close to me anyway. But um, 
that is a big difference in formula in terms of their like the way that they look. The performance is not very different at all. I feel like, you know, you end up with more of this on your eye because it's more chunk hunky chunky voluminous. And so maybe you might have to spend like a second longer removing it, but that is, I don't know why it's like this, but that's, I feel like the big selling point of the Ilia mascara as a normal, you know, wash off kind of mascara is that it actually is so easy to wash it off. So. That has been my experience. Like the Jones Road is amazing, but it's so hard to get it off of your eyelashes. I like the big clean from Kosas, but it smudges a lot, you know? So um, this doesn't smudge very much and it does remove really, really easily. And as you can see, this isn't just the same formula in different packaging. Like they're very, very different in nature as different, you know, as eyelashes on the same face could be. As far as these lip colors, I will say, I do find the colors to be still a little bit all pink. <laughs> I did see like in the shade range when they released the balmy tints, the balmy glosses, everything's just very, very pink. And I wish that they b both went a little bit cooler toned and also had a little bit more in the orange category for more skin tones. They are just very, very pink, even this one. But it does, I feel like, and I think there are gonna be a lot of people in the comments being like, this is the best thing ever because I never put really saturated color on my lips. And there's a very like vocal minority of people who think I should do it in every single video. And I appreciate you because it helps me balance out my reticence about going outside my comfort zone. I'm always just like, oh, okay, it could look better if I would just put on a nude lip or like a clear gloss or whatever. And there are people in my comments who are like, this is the best makeup look you've ever done. And like those two extremes tend to help me just, you know, find center again. So thank you. I appreciate you. And at the end of the day, it is just makeup. It does wash off. So um, anything else? Yeah, the blue light. I don't love this just because it tends to start to make my makeup part at my pores. And also it plugged up like crazy in the actual sprayer and I have not had it that long. I bought it at the last Sephora sale in like April. So it's not very old, it shouldn't be doing that. And other than that, was that everything? I think that that was everything. Always really like reviewing Ilia because I feel like their stuff is either on one end of the spectrum, totally amazing, or the other end of the spectrum, kind of like, you know, an easy thing for me to say why I don't like it. And most of the time it has to do with preference. None of their products are like bad, you know? <laughs> so I did really uh, enjoy this, the way that this turned out. Like I said, I didn't, try this first. So I didn't know what it was going to look like, how these colors were going to look on me. So um, yeah, I think it's, it's a little bit fall. It's a little bit berry. It's a little bit cool toned. Um, and it's, it's really, really pretty. So I hope you guys appreciated this. If you did give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much. I hope you're having a great almost fall <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.